Over the years, I've discussed a lot of really strange and unusual entities, from walking trees to Sesame Street characters come to life, to half-human, half-you-pick-the-animal. I've covered it all. There's some that even I have a hard time imagining in my head what they might look like based on the description given. For one aging truck driver, his encounter with an entity in Spain will likely go down as one of the strangest as the creature he observed seems to defy logic. In 2019, Albert Rosales, author of the Humanoid Journals, was contacted by a Spanish UFO researcher named Pablo Villarubia Masso. He had been investigating a case which was said to have occurred some 16 years earlier in 2003. Albert himself acknowledged that he'd not heard of too many cases involving the entity described by the primary witness, the entity I'll be discussing in this video. It was spring 2003, Reynoso del Cerrato, Palencia, Spain. Truck driver Gregorio Guerrero, along with three other co-workers, were transporting concrete products from the concrete plant where they all worked. It was 8 a.m. They were hauling the material in three trucks along a gravel road, heading toward a nearby ranch where they were to deliver their payload. Guerrero was in front and was the first to arrive. The other two drivers pulled in behind him, one after the other. Suddenly, all three men observed something descending from the sky. To them, it looked like a man. He was about 16 to 19 feet up in the air, coming towards the ground. Upon seeing the figure, a stunned Guerrero immediately stopped his truck. He stared at it, wondering exactly what it was. The figure eventually landed on the ground almost directly beneath a row of high-tension wires. It stood there for about three to four minutes, not moving. One of Guerrero's co-workers decided to climb out of his truck. For some odd reason, he reached down and picked up a handful of stones. He threw them at the figure, possibly hoping to scare it away. Guerrero and the other co-worker thought his behavior to be odd and insisted that he stop, which he did. Guerrero finally had a chance to study the entity, which was about 30 feet away from where he was sitting in his truck. It stood about 6 feet to 6.5 feet tall. It was brown in color. Its arms and legs were human-like, though what was truly odd was its head. Its head was shaped like a hollow ring. Guerrero and his co-workers were in utter shock staring at this thing, which had no facial features of any kind, mainly because it had no face. What was supposed to be the head was just one large hollow ring. There was also the absence of a neck. The men could see right through the center of this ring. It simply did not make sense that something could exist with such a head. It defied logic. How did it see without eyes? How did it eat or speak without a mouth? How did it hear without ears? It simply made no sense biologically or practically. It was a body without any kind of real head, yet it seemed to function normally. It remained there for another three to four minutes looking around and then it suddenly took off in a diagonal trajectory until it disappeared from sight. The men could not see any wings or any type of external propulsion on the figure. How it was able to achieve flight, Guerrero admitted that he had no idea, nor did any of the other men present. Speaking to Masso, Guerrero thought his encounter was somehow connected to several deceased family members, namely his parents and his brother. It is unclear how he sensed the experience was connected, only that he felt it was some kind of message. Guerrero never saw the bizarre figure again. It is not uncommon that a witness to the unknown might want to attach some kind of deeper meaning to it, if only to help them make sense of what they had just experienced. People have been doing this since the beginning of time and might very well be the basis of many of our religions. The entity in the Guerrero case did not really do much other than land, look around, and then depart. It's possible that its deformity, its ringed head, limited what it was actually able to do. 
More likely, given its appearance, the entity was some kind of advanced humanoid-type drone sent to surveil the area, and it was just a coincidence that all had ended up in the same place at the same time. Upon realizing that it was not alone, the entity, or the drone, merely flew off to wherever it had been sent from. On a July 14, 2018 episode of Beyond the Darkness with Dave Schrader and Tim Dennis, a California man named Ed called in to tell of a weird experience he had while driving his car. It was June 2006. Ed claims that he was exhausted due to finals week. At the time, he was working on earning his bachelor's degree and was employed at FedEx working the evening shift. He had just gotten off work at 3 a.m. and was driving home. He was listening to some oldies on the car radio, and his windows were down so he could enjoy the cool breeze. He was just getting off the I-210 in San Bernardino, getting close to the exit light when he spotted something strange. I noticed a car stopped on the shoulder and what appeared to be a very large man. I got closer and noticed his face. It wasn't a normal face. He or it looked inhuman. No ears, a weird nose, a pronounced brow, and eyes that glowed bright when my headlights shone on him. I started becoming afraid, which is something I'm not used to. Also, I should note I'm 6'3", and at the time, I exercised a lot, wrestled and boxed. I'm not cocky, never was, but I grew up in rough areas in Los Angeles. Fighting was just normal. That said, I wanted to get away from there. Ed hit the gas pedal and sped off. It was so jarring that he nearly crashed getting off the freeway. He eventually pulled his car to the side of the road and tried to calm himself down. He was shaking all over. I kept telling myself to calm down. I got angry. I decided to go and help a stranded motorist. That's what I kept telling myself I saw. Upon arriving back on the scene, Ed retrieved a flashlight, a tire iron, and his buck knife. He wasn't sure what to expect, but felt some protection was warranted. I headed back to the vehicle. I called out, Anyone there? I checked out the car and the area. There were weird footprints in the dirt. They didn't look like shoe prints. There were handprints on the trunk. I say ham because the print didn't really look human. I started getting an awful feeling in my lower back, and I realized I was in a heightened state of alarm. I couldn't shake the feeling I wasn't alone there. I kept calling out, who's there? But I'll admit, I didn't want to find out or get an answer. With that, Ed returned to his vehicle and drove home. Curiously, he was unable to sleep for three days, something he and his friends found odd. My roommates thought I was having a psychotic episode, but when I told them what happened, they started freaking out. His roommates debated on whether or not Ed had encountered some type of demon or possibly an E.T. Ed himself was inclined to believe that it was the latter. It's been over 10 years since the incident, and I'll be happy to never have another incident like that again. When I first heard this call, my immediate thought was that Ed had accidentally stumbled upon an abduction in progress. He did not indicate seeing any kind of crap, nor did he see what he thought was the vehicle's owner, just an inhuman figure standing near the car. So I assumed that the event had already occurred, or was in the process of occurring, when Ed and his car drove up that roadway. It's entirely possible that the crap was in the woods close to the highway, just at a view of passing motorists, which would explain why the figure might have been lingering around the area, maybe keeping an eye on things. Upon his return to the abandoned car, Ed found strange hand and footprints around the vehicle, indicating that something had happened. He also described feeling as though he wasn't alone. The more I think about it, though, the more I'm convinced that something else occurred that evening, something that Ed just can't recall. The sheer fright he described his entire body shaking in fear, and his inability to sleep for three days suggests some type of traumatic event. I'm convinced that there is more to the story. Is it possible that he too was taken, either when he passed the figure on the roadside, 
or possibly when he returned to the area to investigate. Thank you.